we thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yo rikanda la yoro lobo koto satala yana yala bakata sote. Father, in your name. Father, in your name, we worship you, Lord, this evening, O oh God. Lord, we thank you, Father. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving. Lord, into your courts with praise. We are thankful unto you, O oh God. Lord, we are grateful unto you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Ye Lori kandala yana yoro koto sitele kasata yana yana kasata lai. Glory to you, O God. Glory to you, O God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you, we bless you. Ika yara la la bokoto satala yana yala bakasata. Inhabit our praises, O God. Inhabit our praises, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Inhabit our praises, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Ike andara na yala bokotori anda yana kasitele ke. Yo ki anda yana yala bakatala yana yala basatala. I plead your blood upon us tonight, O God. Lord, I plead your precious blood, precious blood upon us tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I release the mind of Christ upon us this evening, O God. Lord, that we might have the same mind. As we have your spirit, the same spirit, O oh God. Lord, that we may be perfectly joined with you, O oh Lord, right now. In the name of Jesus, that we might be your body on the earth. Lord, to do your will. To do your bidding, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. We can't do without you, Father. We can't do without you, O oh God, leading, guiding, O oh Lord, letting us know your will, God, letting us hear your voice, O oh Lord. Ye kandarana yala bakata la mayana kasata la ya. Yo ri kandala yana yala bakasata la mahai. Father, we pray right now in Jesus' name. We pray, O oh Lord, we pray, O oh God, to you. We pray to you, O oh God, the King, the one that knows everything, the one that can do exceeding abundantly, Lord, above all that we ask or think, according to the Holy Ghost power that is flowing, working in us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We pray right now, oh God, we pray, Lord, power, there's power in prayer, oh God. There's a flow when we pray, oh Lord, where we're connected to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we forget about the things of the day, oh Lord. We forget about the things that have happened today, oh God, we cast those things upon you. We cast our cares upon you, God, both the good and the bad, O oh God. We cast, Lord, our jobs upon you, our responsibilities, the things, O oh Lord, the weights of this world, O oh God, that we may be able to lay it aside. Some on somebody begin to weigh, lay aside every weight, the things that weigh you down in your mind, in your spirit, in your speech. I cast those weights upon you, O Lord. I unburden myself today. I thank you for it, O God. I thank you for the privilege, O Lord, of being able to do that, Lord. I cast my cares upon you, O King, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I kandara na moko tori ande ke tele anda ya nasata. Ye ka ye kandara na ye ka ye ya nati se tele. Lori kanda ye anda laki se tele. Thank you, Father, for taking, Lord, the burdens off, God, the cares off, Lord, the weights off, God, that I may be in the yoke with you, O Lord, that I may learn of you, O God, and realize your humble, Lord, lowly of heart, God, and I may take on your burden. It's easy. It's light, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. A kakama hai, i kata la mahai, na makasata la mahai. Yo ri kanda la masata la ye. I release, O Lord, peace of mind, O God, upon this place, and upon those that are watching, O Lord, upon those that will be hearing this, O God, live or recorded, O God. I release peace in this place, God, the preparation. Of the gospel of peace, we prepare ourselves right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we receive your peace, O God. We receive your peace, O Lord. God, the peace that passes understanding. The peace, O God, that only comes, Lord, as we cast our cares, as we surrender our will. As we are no longer in control, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We surrender our will for your will, O oh God. Lord, we cast our cares to take on your yoke, your burden. God, we lay aside every weight, every sin, O oh Lord. Let it not easily beset us, O oh God, or distract us, O oh Lord, or weigh us down or slow us down. I release your strength upon us, your people, O oh God. Lord, we may have God's speed, O oh Lord, for your business of the king requires urgency, requires haste. I lose strength upon this place. I lose strength upon your body, O oh God. I lose divine strength, O oh Lord. God, come upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody, would you begin to cast your cares right now? And would you begin to believe God Oh, for your petitions, your prayers, your needs? Yea, for yourself, even for your family, even for your loved ones in the name of Jesus Christ. A katalamahai. I katalamahai na makatai. Lo ri kandala na ike tele satalai. Yo ra kandara na yo ro koto randala na yara na I lose the clarity of mind, O oh God. I lose clarity in the thought process right now in Jesus' name. Lo kandarana ya na kitere kasete. Even as the battle rages in the thoughts, O oh God, that we would have, O oh Lord, victory over it. Every thought captive, O oh God, to the knowledge of Christ. Lord, that we may give our energy, O oh Lord, our time, our talent, our treasure to the kingdom of God. And not to this world, O oh Lord, not to the temporary things, O oh Lord. The pursuit, O oh God, of secular rhythm, O oh God, and things that are temporary. Help us, Father. Lead us, Father, to give our time, our energy, our effort to the kingdom, O oh God. Oh, for it has eternal value. It will live forever. It will outlive this life, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for laborers, O Lord, to be sent. I pray you would quicken us, O God, to go out where the people are, O God, that we could proclaim this gospel as you have commanded us. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, quicken us, O Lord. 
take away any hindrance, oh God, in our person, in our personality, in our habits, in our fears. Lord, that we may go out there boldly, oh God, and witness to you and have a conversational peace, oh Lord. The tracts, oh God, that we hand out, that we can speak, oh God, to people in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, draw the hungry father, draw the thirsty, O oh God. Lord, I thank you for the baptisms that have happened, O oh Lord, in the past weeks, O oh God. I thank you, Father, for those that you have filled with your own spirit, O oh God, these past weeks. I release, O oh God, a move of your spirit. I release, O oh Lord, the drawing of your spirit, O oh God, through us, your people, our oh Lord. God, quicken us and move upon us, God, even as you draw people to us, Lord, in our everyday life, God, and even at the church, O oh Lord, especially when you draw them here. Take away the blinders off, O oh God, off of us that we may reach, that we may proclaim, that we may connect, O oh Lord, as you have commanded us to go, O oh God. I release angels in this place, O oh Lord, ministering spirits, God, for us, those that are going to inherit Lord, salvation, your kingdom, I release, oh God, your strength. I release, oh Lord, these angels to assist us, oh God, to reach, Father. Help us to be your body that reaches, oh King. Help us to be your body, oh God, that speaks, that cares, that loves, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody, would you pray right now that God will use you, that you would be indeed the body of Christ on the earth. Would you pray right now that you would be the extension of his hand that reaches out. That you would be the extension of his mouth that speaks. His eyes, his ears. Oh, that sees and hears. And his heart that loves people through you in the name of Jesus Christ. I release, Lord, even the gift of faith, God. To be in operation among us, O oh Lord. God, it will no longer be our faith, but the faith of the Son of God. Oh, that I live by the faith of the Son of God. That the life we now live, we live by the faith of the Son of God. Oh, who loves us, cares for us. Lord, freely we have received, freely we give. Freely we have received your love, O oh God, unconditionally. Freely we release it and express it to somebody else. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, would you speak right now? For with your mouth, with the words that God gives you, you can overcome. You can activate oh, the kingdom by your mouth. Life and death is in your tongue. Speak faith. Speak words that God gives you. Oh, according to we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, God will begin to do exceeding. Oh, it will exceed your expectation. It will be in abundance, not sporadic here and there, but there will be an abundance of a move of the Holy Ghost in your life and in the people that you're reaching for. Oh, it will be above all. Oh, it will be above all your imagination, what you ask, what you think, because of the power of the Holy Ghost that's been invested in you. Speak in Jesus' name. Pray in Jesus' name. Jesus' name, whatever you do in word, indeed do it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Would you pray right now for souls? Would you pray right now in Jesus' name for those that have 
been filled with the Holy Ghost. Those that have been baptized that God will draw them, will lead them into all truth. <clears throat> Father, we pray that you would lead and guide all of us, God, especially those that have just been born again into all truth. I pray for Hannah, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. God, lead her, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lead her, Father. Lord, at her tender young age, draw her, O oh God. Lead her into all truth. I bind hindrances in her life, O oh God. I bind the voices, O oh Lord, that lie unto her, O oh God. And I release your voice. I release the clarity of your voice. I release your word, your rhema that you have proclaimed over her. It will not return void, God. But it will accomplish, O oh Lord, what it will in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for Julia Bright, O oh Lord, that you keep drawing her, Father. Keep drawing her in the name of Jesus. Keep drawing her, O oh God. Yo riandarana yo rokoto sataye. Lord, the need for brokenness, O oh God, for the breaking, O oh Lord, I release it upon her life, that the soul might be saved. Ike, na, 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 kotorandai. You're the only one that can save, O oh God. You're the only one, O oh Lord, that can reach. In the name of Jesus, I pray for Anthony, O oh Lord, that you would draw him, keep drawing him, Father. Keep drawing him to you. Keep drawing him to an altar, O oh God. I bind the hindrances in his life. Draw him, lead him, and guide him into all truth, O oh God. Ikandarana yorokotoranda yana yana tase. Yo rianda yana yana yala bokoto rianda yana yana kata sate. Ye yana na makata la mahai. Lord, engraft him into the body. Engraft him into the body, O oh God. Connect him, Lord, with brothers and sisters, O oh God. Reveal to him, O oh Lord, truth. Reveal to him, Lord, the simplicity of the gospel, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Iatarana yanakata satalamahai. Ike andarana manakasatai. Quicken his mind, O oh Lord. Help him to hunger, to thirst after you, O oh God. Lord, reveal your voice to him that he may be led, that he might be guided into all truth in the name of Jesus Christ. He kandarana mokoto satalaye. He kandala morotorianda labakata satalaye. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, for Brother Luke, O oh God, that you would lead him, Lord. I cover him with your blood, O oh God. Lord, I release your word, your divine plan upon his life, O oh God. Speak to him even now, Father. Speak to him even now, Father. Yea, come on, somebody, would you pray for souls right now? Speak to him even now, O oh God. Out in the field, O oh Lord. Let it be planted deep in his heart. The souls, uh, the gospel, the seeds, uh, the plans, the thoughts, uh, the rhema, O oh God, uh, that none can shake it, that none can steal from it. I seal it, O oh God, uh, with your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for John, O oh God. <clears throat> That was baptized last Sunday, O oh Lord. Lord, I release, O oh God, your will, your perfect will upon him. I release, O oh God, your perfect will upon him, Lord. God, I loose your grace upon his life to pursue you, O oh God, to realize it's just the start. In the name of Jesus, quicken and strengthen his body, O oh Lord, to pray, to study your word, to be in your house. 
to be encouraged, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for Dora, oh God. Lord, keep leading her, keep guiding her, Lord. In Jesus' name, as your word says, God, when the spirit of truth is come, it will lead us and guide us into all truth, oh Lord. I pray for Santa, oh God, that you would, oh Lord, touch her body even now. In the name of Jesus for healing Lord for your will oh God for your strength oh Lord I pray for the quickening of the mind oh God to receive your word in the name of Jesus Christ I release your voice in this place I release your voice in this place, God, that we may hear your voice, Father, that we may hear your name, Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and that we may obey it by your grace that is working in us, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release divine revelation in this house. I release divine revelation in this place, O oh God. Let it rest upon each and every one of us, Lord. Cause us to hunger and thirst after you, O oh God, to pursue you, O oh Lord. To know you, O oh God. To know when you speak. Oh, how you speak, oh God, and the grace to obey it in the name of Jesus Christ. I release your voice and your voice alone, God. Lord, I bind all the other voices, oh God. I bind the voices of the flesh, oh Lord. I bind the voices of the enemy, oh God. Lord, that appeals to convenience. That appeals, oh Lord, to comfort. God, that resists the stretching of faith. The exercise, the building up of faith, oh God. I bind those voices in the name of Jesus Christ. Yea, even as you, O oh Lord, reveal your perfect will unto us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. May you, O oh Lord, quiet the other voices in our lives, O oh God. Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah, God. Would you stand right now in the name of Jesus Christ, and would you worship Him? Would you lift up your hands, and would you begin to worship the name of the Lord Jesus? Lord, we worship you in this place. We worship you in this house, O oh God. Lord, we're thankful unto you. We bless your name, Father. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Would you thank him right now for every good thing that has ever happened to you? Would you ascribe to God every good thing, every perfect gift comes from your Father above. In the name of Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord.
give him our praise. Let's give him our praise through our lips. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Lord, oh God, we want to do your will. We want to be in your presence, oh God. We treasure the moments with you, oh God, to commune with you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for your beautiful presence that we feel tonight, oh God. Lord, I feel, oh God, the spirit of comfort is in the house tonight. I feel that in my spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your hope, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Father. We love you, Jesus. presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give him right now a joyful noise. Can we do that? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, oh God. We treasure you, Father. We love you, oh God. You deserve our praise, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated if you want to sit down. Amen. I know there's a lingering spirit, and that's beautiful. And I thank God for what we feel tonight. Amen. And um, just, I got just one announcement that we have our connect group at Mission Viejo, right, tomorrow. And so we are going to have that, and we thank the Lord for that opportunity to gather and to study the Word of God in Jesus' name. All right, so I am going to start my lesson tonight. And it is titled, How to Flow in the Spirit. Last Wednesday, we completed our lesson on spirit-led soul winning. And I apologize that I wasn't able to complete the lesson handout, but it should be available soon. Amen. Seeking and saving lost souls is the heartbeat of God. Amen which means that this should also be our passion, our drive, and our purpose as the sons of God. And in line with that, the goal for tonight's lesson is to better equip us on how to flow in the Spirit so that we can always be ready to minister to souls. So first of all, let's talk about the infilling of the Spirit of God. The promise of the New Testament, as the Old Testament and prophets declared, was the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And this was first experienced when? On the day of Pentecost, right? In Acts chapter 2. And Peter was the first apostle who preached the message of salvation on how to receive the same promise of the Holy Ghost that they just received. Amen? And this is what he said. This is what he preached to the other Jews that heard them speak in tongues. And they were a bit confused (laughs) because they thought they were drunk, right? And so they questioned Peter. And Peter preached to them, basically telling them that, Remember the Lord Jesus, you crucified the Messiah. And they were pricked with their hearts. And in verse 37, Acts 2, 37, they said, what shall we do? What shall we do? And it is recorded in Acts 2, 38, amen? 
And this is what Peter said. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. For the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I love this verse because it has it all together. You don't have to read the whole, you know, the whole Bible in one verse, Acts 2.38. It will tell you what you need to do to be saved, amen, to enter into the kingdom of God, amen. And I know we've, we've studied um, on how to rightly divide the word of God and all that, so I'm not going to go into um, discussion of that. But let's talk about receiving the Holy Ghost. So to receive in this scripture and in, in this context from the Greek root word, to receive is actually not a passive word. But it means to reach out, to take and seize what is offered. Okay? So there is some faith required when one receives the Holy Ghost as they demonstrate their faith by reaching out and taking the gift of the Holy Ghost. All right, so the indwelling of the Spirit was the new covenant. And when we receive the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, it becomes our seal or our security deposit that we will inherit the kingdom of God. Ephesians 1, 13, 14 says, In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after ye that believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, so nobody can tell us that receiving the Holy Ghost is optional for our salvation. No, because that's not what the Bible says. And I know that's just one verse there. But if you read the whole book of Acts, amen, you will see <laughs> that there is very clearly, amen, the examples on how they were saved, amen, in Jesus' name. But, so... I want to also say this. Did you know that when we receive the Holy Ghost, that it is not just for our salvation? I mean, we're blessed to have that promise, amen? We have our ticket, amen? Ticket to heaven, okay? But it's for everything. Everything because the spirit in us that we receive that serves as secures our eternal salvation, also becomes the spirit of grace that empowers us. In Jesus' name. And 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. He's lending us that power in us, amen? It is his power. We are just the conduits for his power. And let me tell you that every spirit-filled person was promised some great privileges. Yes, we have salvation, but there is more to it. There is so much more to it, amen? So let's read about it in John 4, 14. It says, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And another translation, it's beautifully stated in Amplifying classic version is, but whoever takes a drink of water that I will give to him shall no never be thirsty anymore, but the water, water that I give him shall become a spring of water welling up continually 
flowing, bubbling with him to eternal life. We will be talking about this amazing spring of water. But before that, what does it mean by we shall never thirst? What kind of thirst is this talking about? Well, I don't think that it's the thirsting after God's righteousness because according to Scripture in Matthew 5, 6, it says, blessed are they that what? to hunger and thirst after his righteousness, right? So it's not talking about that. So let's take a look at another translation so that we can get the correct context. And this one's in Young's literal translation. But whoever may drink of the water that I will give them may not thirst to the age. What does that mean? For or towards this age or world. So whoever may drink of the water that I will give them, the Lord says, may not thirst for or towards this age or world. Amen. So what this is saying is that the flow of the Holy Ghost in us will not only produce eternal life, but the way that it produces eternal life is that it quenches your thirst for the things of this world or for whatever things are being offered at this age. Basically, it is a spirit of God inside of you that is able to quench the desires or the longingness of your flesh. Wow. This revelation is powerful to us but also for others, amen? For me, it gives me the hope, amen? Hope for the sinners or a confidence in reaching out to them since we know that they need God, amen, even when they don't acknowledge it, okay? So we can reach out to them through their emptiness, Because their emptiness is universal. As God created all of us that way so that he and him alone can fill that emptiness inside of us. And if you remember last Wednesday, um, this is what the Lord Jesus quoted to the Samaritan woman at the well. Who was an outcast because she was living in sin. Trying to look for the source of happiness in relationships. Since she had five husbands already and the one she was currently with was not even her husband. Because that's what the flesh does. It's continually thirsty and never satisfied. Now. Let me talk to those who already have the Spirit of God indwelling inside of them. And I believe that's all of us here. Amen? Amen. Thanks for claiming that. Amen. All right. Now, if you're having a hard time living for God, or if there is constantly a pull on you from the outside. I need to tell you that it is because you don't have a flow of living water. Because you're not letting the flow of the Spirit quench your flesh's thirst for the world. And this is very sad. Because when you allow that You are living below your privileges as a Holy Ghost-filled child of God. Because you have no reason to be in bondage or to be thirsty for the things of this world. And I'm not even talking about immorality. I'm just talking about the lure of seeking pleasure, satisfaction, or fulfillment from the outside, from the world. And that's the same as thirsting for the world. Amen. 
The Greek word for world is cosmos. which is actually the same root word used for cosmetics. And I thought that was interesting because the world is telling us, ladies, that we are ugly and that we need to wear a mask or makeup or cosmetics. But we weren't ugly when we were a baby, right? We were the cutest Thing, or a young kid, right? We're so beautiful, right? And then all of a sudden when you become a lady, you become ugly and you have to wear a mask. The world is such a liar. And the world will tell us more lies on how we should look, which is the opposite from what is written in your Bible, amen, and it is opposite on how, on what pleases God, amen, because that's the most important thing, right, to please Him, amen, more than man, to please Him. It's not about being what is, po doing what is popular either, amen, it is all about Him. And so, ladies, we need to be dead to the voices of Hollywood and to this superficial world by allowing the flow of the Holy Ghost inside of us to quench the worldly cravings of our flesh in Jesus' name. And, and I'm happy that we have discipleship level two going on, amen? Have uh, these dedicated ladies here, and they're here, three of them are here, that are studying the word. They want to know more, amen? And they're not afraid to know what's in the word of God. And, and, I, and I praise God because I do see changes in them. Amen. As they obey the word of God, as they follow what the word of God says and not what the world says. Amen. All right. So when God filled us with the Holy Ghost, he expect us, expected us not even to be attracted to that world, to what the world is offering us. Because why would we want to if we have the spirit that empowers us and makes us content? And let me tell you this truth. This is a revelation. That temptation is always a product of an un satisfied soul. If you're drawn to any type of addiction, alcohol, drugs, pornography, or how about shopping, television, Facebook, surfing the web, any of these addictions prove that you're not living in the flow of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because you have developed an appetite for these temporal things to satisfy your flesh continually. Hmm. Well, yeah, you can repent. We can do that every time, amen? Yes? But the problem is not the things of this world, but it's the fact that you have not found the flow or you are not living in the flow of the Holy Ghost. Amen? In his presence. In his life-giving source of water. Amen? Or let's say that you are not in those type of bondages. And please hear me now. But let's say you often feel discontent or fearful or like a roller, roller coaster. Okay, you come to church, you're high, and then you come home, you're low. Or frustrated or basically you are in need of something continually to make you feel better. Then that is also a sign that your soul is unhealthy because it is unsatisfied. 
that you have robbed yourself. When you have that, you have robbed yourself from the benefits of an empowered life by the Holy Ghost or by the Spirit of grace. We have no excuse. He gives that to us. But what are we doing with it? What are we doing with that treasure, with that resource, with that power? And so it is God's will for us to live in the spiritual flow of the Holy Ghost. So I call this the flow, okay? The spiritual flow of the Holy Ghost. In that bubbling well of living water. So that we won't have a need or an appetite for the temporal things of this world. And what does it mean to live in the flow? Living in the flow doesn't mean audibly praying 24 hours. Yeah, it's, it's, it's connecting with God. Praying without ceasing. Connection, right, with God. But it doesn't mean audibly praying 24 hours. But it means that deep down inside there, you have a connection with God that is always there, that is always satisfying. Always satisfying. You know, and when you have made a commitment to put God first in your life, and when you have experienced that path of life, that David mentioned in Psalm 1611, then why would you want to settle for less? I know it sounds too good to be true, but I, can I tell you, this is real. It is real. And there's nothing more satisfying than being in the presence of God. And I promise you, in the presence of God, it will kill any appetite for this world. And I thank God, by the grace of God, I don't want anything in this world. In exchange for my connection with the Lord today. Not even just for a few seconds. Because our experience with God are supernatural and are way beyond what this temporal world can even offer. But that's not all. On top of the joy, the fullness of joy, you see that? The fullness of joy, there's pleasures, non-ending pleasures, amen? For when you do the will of God by his right hand flowing through you as his conduit, what happens? He gives you this awesome privilege for his power, his authority to flow through you as we minister to see souls set free. And church, these are the pleasures forevermore. Amen. The joy of seeing a soul saved, right, Brother Alex? You've seen several, amen. In Jesus' name, there is no joy, pleasure compared to that church. You can't find anything in this world that can give that. Thank you, Lord, oh God. The satisfaction or the fulfillment that we get from doing the will of God. So when you have spent enough time in the presence of God every day, that well of living water inside of you will just bubble up at any time. Even when you're not consciously praying. It may just be like two or three seconds you pray in tongues, right? Yeah, I know my husband does that a lot at home. Amen. Or it could be two or three minutes you just feel the flow and you're yielding. Amen. But it's going so good that it just has to come out. Amen. Amen. It just has to flow. And that, my friend, is living in the flow of the Holy Ghost. We're talking about how to flow in the Spirit. Amen. You see, the purpose of drinking alcohol, which they call as spirits, right, is to deaden something in them in a way to find some comfort, relief, a way to have a good feeling. But we do not need this type of spirit when we have the Holy Spirit. Amen? And God's process of quenching 
is so much more than God just giving you a drink of his refreshing water. For it's more than pouring his spirit into a container. For in John 4, he said, when I receive the living water, I'm not just drinking of it, but I'm opening up my being for him to impart or implant in me a spring inside of me that's constantly bubbling and flowing, and it never runs out. Which implies that whatever I may need, church, it will always be available. Because that spring of water is inside of you. You have it everywhere you go. Amen. And in John 7, the same living water is described as rivers. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Flow rivers of living water. That's the spirit of God dwelling in us, okay? And it is a verbal flow of the spirit. Yeah, you may feel good. That's good. You, you feel good at times, right, when you feel the flow in the Holy Ghost. But it is not the, the kingdom of God is activated, activated by speaking the word, not by feeling, okay? So that's why it's a verbal flow. The flow of the river in us. Amen? What is the belly? The belly is the cavity or our inner emptiness, which is eternal, which means it can only be satisfied by God. And here's the process of spiritual flow. Okay? is It is first getting out of God's way. By surrendering my control and dying out to myself by his grace. And then God fills my inner cavity. And when my cavity is filled, then there is going to be an outflow. And without outflow, we have rivers of living water inside of us. And that's plural. Because there can be different types of rivers flowing in us. For example, a river of tongues, okay? And many of you have learned that there's more than one type of tongue, okay? Um, but we have here at least four types, okay? First is what we call as the rest and refreshing tongues, and I have a scriptural reference for that. We also have the prayer and praise tongue. This is the most common. When... A person receives the Holy Ghost, it's usually that type of tongue, okay? And it's a praising tongue, okay? How do I know? Because there are times that others have spoken in tongues, amen, and, and it was a language that we knew, and we say, oh, they're praising God. They understood what it meant, okay? So it's a prayer and praise tongue, okay, and then you have the river Tell you have a warfare intercession tongue. We know what that is, right? Sorry, I don't have time to demonstrate that, but we know this already. But I'm just giving you um, the outline of that. And travail intercession tongue, okay? But I can also pray in English, okay? In English with a flow of the Spirit. And I can witness with a flow. Okay, give a word with a flow. And I can counsel with a flow. I can teach with a flow. Hope you're feeling, he, feeling that flow, amen. I can prophesy with a flow. And we just need, need to yield to whatever particular flow that may be. But we have rivers, rivers in us, amen. Wow. The Holy Ghost, the resource of the Holy Ghost. But back to the first step of spiritual flow, I've got to get out of the way, amen. I've got to give up my will and die to myself, okay. The Bible says that the eye is never satisfied with seeing and the ear is never satisfied with hearing. And so we shouldn't even try 
to satisfy the thirst of our soul from outside sources because it never works. And if you keep trying it, it will only lead you to developing an appetite for it. And then what happens? Bondage. Okay? For you can't quench this thirst from what you're taking outside in. You may get a moment's release, but the emptiness will always come back. But when you've learned how to be content by the power of the Spirit of God, it is life-changing. And this should be our goal, amen, as we seek an empowered life with God. And I know Bishop Wright always has been teaching this, right? You remember that, contentment, to be content. We want to get there. We want to get there in Jesus' name. Godliness with contentment is great gain, 1 Timothy 6.6. 6. And it is great gain because when you're content, you don't want anything else. And you don't need anything else. You're good. As they say, you're satisfied. Okay? Philippians 4.11 says this. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. And Apostle Paul learned how to be content in whatever state that he was in. How did he do that? Instead of seeking to satisfy his need or his want by his own ways or from the outside, he surrendered it to God by enduring that thirst in his flesh. Okay? And then that thirst was eventually quenched when he, he found his flow in the spirit. Remember those rivers? Amen? By spending time in God's presence. And praying and allowing the power of the Holy Ghost to transform and deliver him. Being content is the absence of needs, and I'm going to add, and wants. Why? Because whatever you want becomes a need. Being content is being satisfied wherein I don't have wants that tempt me to look for some other source for satisfaction. Take note of this. And having wants, and we've learned this before, is the same as covetousness. And what is covetousness? Wanting things that God is not giving us. Whatever is in my life and heart that is competing with God for my source of quenching my thirst is a want that interferes in my relationship with God. It may not even be sin or immorality. Like if you eat or shop or spend time with friends as your source of comfort instead of yielding to God, hmm, then that is a sin. That's missing his mark. But that doesn't mean you can't enjoy eating and shopping. I enjoy those things, okay? Doesn't mean you can't enjoy, right, these safe pleasures, okay? You can enjoy these things without a guilty conscience as long as they are a complement and not your source to quench your inner thirst. Does that make sense? Okay. So how do I have this flow, or how do I learn how to have, to flow in the spirit? Okay? We've covered a lot of this already, but now we're going to discuss this from a different angle. So more of a practical application here. How do we do this? Number one, having a connection with God that will always satisfy me or you. John 15, 1, 3 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. 
Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. So who is the vine? Jesus, okay. And who are the branches? We are. Amen. All right. So he's the vine and we are the branches. Okay. Then the spirit of God flows into the vine. Okay. And what does it do? When it flows into the vine, the spirit of God, it nurtures the branches. Amen. Then we bear fruit as we are connected to the vine, okay? The key in this verse, in this is verse 4, which is to abide, okay? To abide, which means is to have a connection with God 24 hours a day, every time. Everything starts with a healthy relationship with God. And that's our only way to be known of God, right? So that he may know us in the last days. So during your prayer time, you enter into his presence. You find and connect with your flow in the spirit for that day. And then live, you live the rest of the day in that flow. And when you do that, you'll be tempted by very few things. But if you're still being tempted, then that means you're not sincerely connecting with God. That maybe it's more than just a chore, than a relationship. Or you're not spending enough time to connect with God and to experience. Remember? That path of life, that fullness of joy, those pleasures forevermore. Those are his promises. We need that every day, every day to live in the flow, to live in the Holy Ghost, the waters of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Because when you are abiding in him and living in the flow, it means that deep down inside there, You have a connection with God that is always there, that is always satisfying. But every time you find that flow in the Holy Ghost, just enjoy it and fellowship with the flow every time. Amen? And that process is called living in the flow of the presence of God every day. Every day. It's for us every day. You can flow anytime, any place, because he's giving you a spring inside of you. And that is his living water. John 15, 5 says, I'm the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. And that's the number one principle of fruitfulness. And as I stay firmly connected to the vine, I can and I will bear fruit. And fruitfulness is the norm of being a disciple of Christ. When I say fruit, I'm talking about souls, amen. It's about souls, not the fruit of the Spirit. You should have the fruit of the Spirit in you. (laughs) You should have that. And because you have that, you will have the fruit of men, the fruit of souls, because of that fruit that they can evidence in you, they can see that in you, okay? So as I stay firmly connected to the vine, I can bear fruit, amen. And being fruitful is being a disciple of Christ. Amen. He expects that from us. Because what happens? He will remove the branches who are not fruitful. And that's why soul winning is part of staying saved. So we better get busy. Amen. Learning, growing, and doing the will of God. And as we abide in the vine with our relationship with him 24-7, we can't afford to be separated from the vine, which is the source of our life, amen, or the source of the Holy Ghost power that flows into us. And please hear me. We can't allow the stress of life 
to cause any breach or gap between us and our relationship with God. No, we can't afford that at any time. Don't skip church. Don't skip prayer if you don't have a good reason. Because that's how backsliding starts. It's when you allow, even you start with a small gap and then it increases. You allow a gap in your relationship with God and then you become disconnected from the source of life. Remember, there's a source of life coming from the vine, which means you lose the grace that keeps you saved. Amen. So we need to abide in the vine continually, securing our connection with God every day, and that process will always keep us satisfied and fruitful. Amen. And part of staying connected with God and with God's grace is dying to myself. That's Number two, how to have the flow in the spirit, dying to ourselves. And that's a choice that I need to make every day. Lord, not my will, your will be done today, every day, because prayer is a daily thing. And one way to die to ourself is to unlearn or ignore the ways or the habits of our flesh. And I, I wanted to share this because it would help us as we're growing more, right, to minister, uh, and God is going to fill this church, amen, with new souls, and we want to be ready for that. Um, so here's how the flesh usually operates and distracts us, and it's important that we're led by the Spirit, amen, governed by the Spirit, and so um, one way to die to ourselves is to unlearn the tendencies of the flesh, and here's how the flesh usually operates operates and distracts us yeah doing spiritual things okay all right these are the ways amen number one two three and four ha by habits or tradition things we've been used to doing okay human logic oh this makes sense let's do this pressure to perform hello okay or desire to please man okay these are some common examples that we've got to learn how to stop and not do these things when we feel the, feel the pull, okay? And I'll, give you, and I'll give you an example. Before I go and minister to someone, I usually wait on God to direct me on how I should minister to that person. And I can usually discern their spirit by observing them. I'll, I'll, I'll look at them or, or listen to them. They're praying. Or look at their countenance. It says a lot, right? When you look at the countenance of a person, it says a lot. But I don't automatically go and pray for them without trying to discern God's will for them. Okay? I want to minister to their need, but my goal, listen, please, is not to pray for them to feel good. That's not my goal. I, yeah, I do want them to feel good. But if God says no, I'm not going to do that. Okay, it, it's, it's being careful to follow him, okay, because you're, we're so used to being led by the flesh, right, okay, so we get to unlearn that habit, say, no, I want to stop, discern, God, what do you want me to do, what, what, how do you want me to minister to this soul, okay, you know, because God might be giving them the conviction to repent, and so I need to get out of the way so that they can do that. Or there are times that they may not even be ready for ministry for whatever reason. And I sensed that in some of our guests the last time. And so I, I stayed away. They, they weren't ready for ministry. Okay. And feeling the pressure to minister for the purpose of having a result is not God's will. Okay. I remember one time I asked Brother Eli. Our, our precious brother Hernandez, to pray. I said, Brother Eli, can you pray for this person to receive the Holy Ghost? And you know what he said to me? Does he want to receive the Holy Ghost? I just assumed that we needed to pray for everyone to get the Holy Ghost, which is like following tradition, habits, right? But he must, this prophet of God, must have discerned 
that that person wasn't even ready for it. He's not ready for it. Why does God want to give it to him, right? So we need to be sensitive to God's specific leading, which might mean just doing nothing and leaving them alone. Okay, that's all right. You follow the leading. And I know we're learning here, we're growing. And I, I will be your coach. And I, and I thank those who let me coach them and stop them, push them, go pray. Thank you. Okay, and I'm, I'm still growing as well. All right. Number three, how to flow in the spirit is to study the word and take ownership of it. Hide it in your heart. We know that we need to try the spirits, right? The scripture, I think that's 1 John 4, 1. By letting the spirit of God compare those thoughts with what we've hidden in our heart, right? So we got to hide things in our heart. So we need to spend time learning the word that we may take ownership of it. And I encourage you to do that. You do that even if it's rhema spoken from others, okay? I do that a lot listening to Bishop Wright. I claim all his rhemas. It's good, amen? I take ownership of it, okay? Um, so as we do this, God puts good treasure in us, okay? Then when it's time for it to come out, all he has to do is speak a word, and he just gives a starting point, and then you let it flow, okay? But take note, before we can learn how to flow, we need to prepare, Need to prepare because preparation is studying to take ownership of it okay and flowing which we want to do is a delivery method for what has been prepared so we can't flow in anything that's not prepared right we got to be prepared we got to be prepared and I'm going to show you a progression when we study the word of God supernaturally or with the author and this is pretty cool all right progression of studying it starts with getting knowledge knowledge in my mind in my head okay that's a good start good starting point but did you know that does not change you knowledge in the head does not change you okay it doesn't so we should not stop at getting knowledge okay but when I go further and I take ownership of what I know, making it a part of me, what happens then? Then that becomes and is called understanding, okay? And it takes place in my heart when I hide it in my heart or my inner man. And when I begin to cooperate with what I understand, then that's what changes me, okay? That's where the change starts. When you get those understandings, oh, that makes sense. I'm going to do that. I believe that. Amen. And then here's the next progression. Then the spirit takes what I understand as I gain experience with that understanding by applying it in my life and puts that understanding in my spirit. Then that is called wisdom. Wisdom. And this is a beautiful definition. Wisdom is the ability to take what I have learned and I have proven through understanding in my life that has also affected my life so that the spirit can then use it to affect other people's lives. Wisdom should always be flowing through us. It's not just a gift. It should be continual. We should have this. And I believe many of you are operating in it. Amen? The wisdom. So knowledge is in the head. Okay? Understanding is in the heart or the inner man. And then when understanding gets in my spirit, that is wisdom. Knowledge is what I learn. And when I, when I keep it in my head, I can minister with head knowledge. Okay? But when it becomes mine wherein that understanding shows me how that knowledge is to be used to change my life, to draw me closer to God, amen, and to grow me, that is inward, okay, inward, okay? Then as the understanding grows, 
it gets into my spirit, then it becomes wisdom that I can share with others, and that becomes outward. We let it flow. Amen? The word of God. In Jesus' name. John 15, 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, this word here is rhema, okay? Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. So when I hear and receive the utterance of the living voice, the rhema, I shall, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you according to his will. Amen? Because as we abide in him, it's not, it's not a blank check. <laughs> when you abide to the vine, what he loves becomes what you love, right? What he hates, you hate. And so you want to do his will. You want his name to be magnified, amen? You want his kingdom to come, amen? Because you're abiding in him, okay? All right. Now, this process, okay, of the flow of the rhema by the word. The centurion in Matthew 8, 8 demonstrated his faith in God's rhema. Remember that? His servant was sick, and Jesus offered to go to his house, right, to pray for his servant. And he said, no, 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 you don't need to do that. Okay, he understands the flow of authority. But what's neat is that he also had the revelation of the power of the word, the rhema. He said, you just speak the word, and it shall be done. Wow. And that marveled the Lord like, wow. <laughs> That's the power of the rhema, okay? And in that selfsame hour, right, the servant was healed. So if we, just, if we just say the word or flow with faith, it will be released into the spirit world and it will happen. And I want to say this. It also means that we don't always need to be physically present to minister to a person, right? Because the Lord said, I, I, did, I don't need to be there. I mean, the, the, the centurion believed he didn't need to be there, and, and the Lord didn't argue with him, right? Okay, because the power of the word. But there are times for people's sake that you put your hand on their head. Okay? It's scriptural, right. But you know what the purpose of that is for? Okay? Not so that it can happen. Okay, because it, it, it can happen even with a word. Amen? There's power in the rhema, the flow of the rhema. But we do this so that they can feel the connection, amen, to help boost their faith. Because when you are experiencing the flow from the vine, okay, you experience that flow, and then you put your hand on them, they will feel that flow, okay? And that will increase their faith so that they will receive the rhema. Okay, that's all there is to it. But laying of hands is not necessary if the person really has faith. And I prayed for many not laying hands because I could sense in the spirit. You know, they're, they're already getting it. I'm not even done yet. <laughs> you know, I'm done praying, you know. And there are times that I feel, okay, I need to, okay, because I can tell in the countenance, okay, mm, you know, that person has, is dealing with something. And then when I put that, my hand, they feel the touch. And it may not even be the forehead, just, you know, the shoulder. Then faith emerges in them, and then they receive the rhema. Does that make sense? Okay. So do that as the Lord leads you, okay? Because we can be, you can be praying here, and they're all the way somewhere else in the world, right? And you speak the rhema, and it flows. And that can happen. Okay, and because somebody's, and how else are we going to reach the world, right, if that's not possible? How else? So it's because somebody's got to hear the rhema and speak it. All right. Okay, number four, how to flow in the spirit is by praying in tongues a lot. And now I know I've discussed this before, but God wants to give us more insight on this. James says, that when my tongue, the most unruly part of our body, and that's James 3, verse 8, when our tongue is tamed, then our whole body is tamed. Okay? So, 
If I'm allowing the Spirit to pray through me in tongues, then what I'm really doing is I'm letting the Spirit train my whole being how to flow in Him. Okay? When I pray in the Spirit, my mind is unfruitful or is not producing what I'm saying. That's 1 Corinthians 14, 14. Which means those words are not coming out of my head, but from my spirit. And when I let the Spirit flow, when I speak in tongues, I learn what that feels like when it flows. So that I know how the flow feels when I speak the rhema in English, okay? As I've let the Spirit teach me how to sense that flow, okay? And this insight will help you as you practice speaking the rhema. So that you can sense whenever you are ministering in the flesh and not in the spirit. For the, fle the flow of the flesh is different from the spirit all the time. Of course, another way to gauge is how, how you're ministering is by its fruit, right? You'll know by its fruit, okay? Um, something good will happen, okay, if you're flowing from the spirit in Jesus' name. Or you can tell by the countenance of the person you're praying for. I hope this helps, okay? And in closing... I want to end with this verse and say that there will be results when we flow with God's spirit and when we minister his word. Jeremiah 23, 29. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? If you want a revival of fire or for the power or life, the power of life to become manifested in a soul, just hear the word, the rhema, and speak the word and expect the fire of the Holy Ghost to come to transform and to bring life. And if you feel that there's a resistance whenever you minister, just hear the rhema. And speak the rhema, and like a hammer, it will break that resistance because that's what the word says. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, oh God. I pray you're covering over us, oh God. Covering of your word, oh God. The seeds of truth planted upon your body, oh God. Let no foul take away from them, oh God. Keep them, Lord, oh God. Grow them in Jesus' name. Would you lift up your hand right now in Jesus' name if you can? Would you just pray for a little bit? Would you receive that word? Would you receive it not just in your mind but in your spirit? It comes by revelation. It comes by impartation. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Would you let it flow right now by speaking in tongues? Would you let it flow through your spirit so it could make an impression in you? This is how it feels when it's flowing. God is teaching us right now in practical application right at this very moment. Uh, would you let it flow in Jesus' name? The easiest way is to speak uh, the language of your Father, to speak in tongues. Uh, that's living water flowing out of your innermost being, uh, out of that eternal part of you, uh, springing up into everlasting life, giving you life. Uh, Making impressions in your mind, imparting, imparting the word, not just knowledge anymore, but the application, the wisdom behind it, making it yours, making it living, breathing the rhema of God. I release a flow here, Father. 
In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Yo Come on, how much of a flow do you want? How much of a flow do you want in your life? How much of the Holy Ghost do you want flowing in your life at any given moment? In the name of Jesus, are you thirsty? Are you thirsty for His Spirit? Or have you filled your life with other things that have stopped the flow? Oh, in His presence there is fullness of joy in His right hand. It satisfies you. There's pleasure. There's contentment. It's a learning process. Come on, in the name of Jesus, just a little bit longer. In the name of Jesus. Anytime there's things blocking in your life, just let the Holy Ghost flow. Anytime you're confused, anytime your emotions are upset or troubled, let the Holy Ghost flow. He knows what you need. He knows what you need. Sometimes He begins to allow things in our life so we would begin a hunger again. We would begin a thirst again for Him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, allow us to start our day every day with a flow, with a connection. From heaven, O oh God. Lord, help us not to disconnect, O oh Lord, when we go to sleep. And God, by your grace, if there is a disconnect, O oh God, that we would stay long enough in the flow until the connection is fully restored, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Everything that you and I need is in the flow of the Holy Ghost. Everything you need for that day is in the flow of the Holy Ghost. You need Him, not anybody else. You need Him and not things. You need Him, not relationship of any kind. You need Him and Him alone. Yeah, How much of a flow do I want, God? How much do I flow am I satisfied with? How much of a flow do I want every day, O oh Lord? Let my satisfaction, contentment come from you, from the flow of your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Rakanda Lamai. Isn't it wonderful how you feel right now in the Holy Ghost? Isn't it satisfying right now, the sense of great satisfaction that you need right now because He is flowing? Yo, Rakanda Lamai. It's not limited here in this place. It's not limited because God is everywhere and He's eternal. At any time you want to flow, it's in you. It's in you, out of your innermost being, your belly. Out of that eternal part of your being. That's where it flows. That's where it flows. It's a whale springing up into eternal life. Oh, it satisfies you oh, more than anything in this temporary world. It satisfies you. It gives you a sense of satisfaction that you cannot even comprehend nor ex adequately explain because it's a flow. It's a flow. And once you get a taste of it, you want it. Once you get a taste of it, you want more and more of it. It's not just emotion. It's not hype. But it is a flow of His Spirit. Oh, there are times that you don't even have to be loud. It just flows. It just flows in Jesus' name. Everything of the kingdom flows. 
Every good thing, every perfect gift comes from, from above. It flows from above, uh, even from the Father of lights. <laughs> when we dwell together in unity, it's like that anointing oil uh, that flowed. Oh, when they began to pour that anointing oil on Aaron, it flowed from the top of his head. That's Jesus Christ. That's God in heaven flowing. Oh, to the beard, even to the outskirts of his garment, it flows to everyone that is part of this kingdom. It flows to everyone that's part of his body. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It flows in us and through us in Jesus' name. It flows in us and through us. That's why when we gather together, where two or three are gathered together, God shows up because it flows in us and through us in Jesus name in Jesus name lead us and guide us into all truth Lord cause us to hunger and to thirst after righteousness God oh blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled they shall be filled in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Are there any questions with what was discussed tonight? Are there any questions in Jesus' name? If you have any question, I'm not quenching the spirit. If there's any question in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, praise God. You know, sometimes we could get enough of the flow here. Could you turn the lights up a little bit, if you would? Thank you. That when you go home, you're no longer thirsty. When you go without for a couple of days until you start looking for that satisfaction again. And that's not how it's supposed to be. Sometimes we could we could pray here long enough to get the edge off and then we leave the same. Sometimes it's better perhaps by the direction of the Holy Ghost to do what we're doing tonight so that when you go home, you're still thirsty. And your thirst will propel you to find that flow. And once you find a flow, you stand. Amen? You stand. Until it flows in a di different direction again, then you, you follow it. And that's the importance of the voice of God. He says, my, my sheep know my voice. To know means you, you know when he's speaking to you. And, and he'll speak differently or different methods. Sometimes he'll speak to you. Most of the time through the preaching of the word in your prayer time. But he could use people that are not even saved to speak to you. You just got to be sensitive enough. That's right. 
And sometimes he could speak to you with things that you don't like. That, that might even be half-truths, like somebody lying about you. And you say, well, that's, that's a lie. That's, I'm not like that. But have you ever stopped to ask that maybe God's speaking to them? There's a little glimpse of truth in what they're saying. You know what I'm talking about? So that's knowing how God speaks. And if multiple people tell you that, then there's a level of truth to it. Amen? So it's like there's two sides of the story all the time. There's different perspectives. But there, are there any questions? These, these are life, a lifetime of principles that we need to pursue. Any questions? So you know how to flow, right? How do you flow? All right. He's got those principles. There would be a waste tonight if you have no answer to that question. And, and the good news is you could actually go on the, the church's webpage and, or Facebook, YouTube, and you could pause that, take a picture or whatever you need to do. Study it. Amen. But think about this. We're not vessels that is filled. You get filled when you first receive the Holy Ghost. After that, we graduate to where there's no bottom or lid in us. God just starts flowing. Anytime. Every time. If you remain a vessel, you could be filled. Then as time progresses and it leaks out or whatever your level is to where you say, I need to be filled up again, then, then you, you do whatever you need to do to fill yourself up again. And then you're satisfied again until it gets to a level, kind of like a gas tank, right? We're not a gas tank. God flows through us. So... When he says out of your innermost being or your part of your body that Ecclesiastes talks about, that God placed eternity in us, that's where he flows. That's where he flows. And that flow, he's liking into water, and that flow will take away any debris in your life. I've seen videos of tsunamis, great rivers that carve up land. God is that living water. And when you just follow after him, he'll take you different places. Take you with faith. And you'll grow. And you'll be satisfied. Amen. Isn't it a wonder that Paul was willing to lose everything and actually counted it as human refuse? what he has accomplished in pursuit of the flow and the knowledge and knowing Jesus Christ. We're all trying to get there. Amen? Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. The enemy of the flow is what do you think is the enemy of the flow? No, it's, it's there's a general enemy, but there's also uniquely what is the primary enemy of the flow of God's spirit in your life today. And it's different for all of us. What, what, what satisfies you outside the flow of the spirit is the enemy of that flow. Your security, what gives you joy, e even negative things, fear. That stops the flow. Amen? And so, I, I pray God reveals that to you. And I, I think all of us know what that is. We just need to throw a good dose of the Holy Ghost in, in the honesty. Amen? Would you stand in Jesus' name?
And would you sincerely pray one more time, Father, that you might be, Lord, our source, God, our source of life, our source of contentment, that we will not find any satisfaction in any other or any one or anything. No goal, no, no accomplishment, no material thing, no relationship. In the name of Jesus Christ, that you are our rest, O oh God, that we rest in you, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's thank the Lord one more time. Father, we thank you for the word. Help us to hide it in our heart, God, that it might be a part of us. That you might continually work in us, God. Give us the grace, Lord, your grace, to take away any debris that would potentially stop the flow of the Holy Ghost. For freely we have received, Lord. Freely it has to flow through us, touching someone else's lives for their salvation. In Jesus' name. I want to encourage you. This week, as God begins to draw people for you to witness to, find that flow, what to say. Don't just let your personality take over, but, but pause long enough and don't be afraid to find, to allow God to flow through you and give you words, because He's going to do that. He said, in the last days, we'll be brought before kings and governors. He said, don't take thought what you will say because at that time it shall be given you what to say. But we need to practice that now. Amen. And the more we open up ourselves to that, God will begin to flow. Because eventually the flow leads to some kind of manifestation of the Word of God in our lives to touch somebody else. And it's usually a word spoken. That changes atmospheres, that heals, that directs, that leads, that guides. And so when you feel a resistance to just be timid and not say anything, that's either your flesh or a spiritual oppression. So resist that. Overcome it. Well, I'm just shy. No. You are having a spiritual warfare. You get a choice. Either you fight back or you revert to the flesh wherein spiritual wickedness flows through. Just as the flow of the Holy Ghost flows through faith, the demonic spirits flows through fear. That's the first thing that ever happened in the garden when they sinned. They feared. So timidity, if you read First and Second Timothy, Paul was always jabbing Timothy. Stir up the gift that's in you. Constantly reminding him. He's, he's, if you read it, the gist is, don't be timid. God told Joshua, he said, as I was with Moses, so I will be. Just fear not. In Jesus' name. Well, enough of that. God bless you. Remain thirsty. Remain in the flow in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>